Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. We're back with our favorite philosopher, and by the way, just a, a favorite friend and guy to speak to all the time, Bill Jordan. How are you doing, Bill? And of course, I'm doing great. John Coleman. <laughs> John Coleman, too. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, uh, you are the man who created the Embrace the Boom movement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the man who sells these fabulous mugs. So being a baby boomer, I happen to know that we all grew up with the same music. Mm. And yet, there's so much, it seems to me every generation has its own music. And when the, when the rappers came out, I thought to myself, okay, this isn't music, but it's their music. They, whatever their parents had, they had to do something different, and boy, did they ever rapping. Sure, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Sure. Right, but I right. thought to myself, well, we did the same thing. You sure. know, rock and roll, parents hated the long hair, the leather jackets, and the rock and roll. The Beatles. And well, I'm yeah. wondering, I'm wondering if people change their musical tastes as they get older. Have you? I, I have. Not yeah, I, I think I have. I think I've, I've more broadened it. But, you know, when you bring mm -hmm. up the Beatles, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. You know, the, our parents complained about the Beatles and long haired, this, that. And the, you look back to the clips of the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, their hair was like just covering their ears or the top of their ears. And they were wearing suits. Yeah. <laughs> and our parents and our parents thought that they were, you know, subverting, uh, you know, the entire, you know, notion of civilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they were very I'm refined kind of versions of Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley was a radical. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Well, part of that was from all the gyrations he did from the waist down. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think I don't want to say that my musical taste necessarily has changed. I just think it has grown. Um, In I what still. Way? Well, I still listen to music in the morning as part of my morning routine, and I'll put on YouTube, and I've got some some uh, playlists that have cobbled together. But it'll be music from the '60s and '70s, and the stuff I grew up with, and got into radio playing, and even some of the '80s. But I have gotten into uh, some of the, I guess, what they would call on satellite or, or satellite XM radio, uh, like deep tracks, stuff that most people haven't heard of. Back in the uh, Mid seventies, I got into Jimmy Buffett. I've become a real kind of a parrot head. I may not know all of his music. That's expanded. I have not lost any of my my love for sixties and seventies music and what was when I was a kid. And it's amazing to me when you when you hear a song, of "Mamas and the Papas," I saw her again, or you know, "Monday Monday." Your subconscious still knows every word yeah. and every little guitar riff and drum. You know, it, it knows all that stuff. But like, for example, when I got married 40 plus years ago, my wife was in the musicals. Well, I was never in a musical. What are you talking about? Now, show tunes, I'm all about it. And here's all I know about show tunes. If I don't know what music it, musical it's from, I always guess Kismet, and I'm right. <laughs> but no, no, like Les Miserables, which is actually an operetta, I'm told. Uh, I love the music of Les Mis. Yeah. I mean, I just I just love it. And then I expanded, even though growing up, I mean, I was born in 1954 and I knew who Dean Martin was and I knew who Frank Sinatra was and Sammy Davis Jr. And I knew who the Rat Pack was. I wasn't into it like I have become in the last five to 10 years where I can just I mean, I can't get enough of it to wear. Back in October, we went to see Michael Buble in concert here in Raleigh. It was his fourth rescheduled concert due to COVID. He just kept having to kept push it back. We bought the concert tickets in November of 2019 and did not see him until October of 2021. Wow. But he's as close to the Rat Pack as I think I will ever get. He is an amazing showman, maybe the best showman I have ever seen. And, and I've seen Elvis and I've seen Neil Diamond in his heyday. Hmm. I have to admit that... Um, uh... <clears throat> I agree that uh, uh, I, I, with you, for me, I, I don't think that uh, I've changed a particular genre here or there, but 
expanded it. And probably the thing that uh, most uh, affected me to accept different kinds of music and uh, appreciate the artist uh, who was... Sure. Uh, uh, so that, that was part of it, was the human being, was uh, when I was uh, my uh, senior year in college, uh, I had six credits to fill in for graduation. So there was a 7 a.m. class. I, I went to college in downtown Manhattan at uh, uh, Pace University. And there was a 7 a.m. class in music appreciation. It was classical music. And up to that point, classical music was not on my radar. You know, it was at funerals and dirges and whatever. Sure. And, sure. Uh, uh, but uh, I remember the teacher was Miss Hall. And it went from 7 to like 8.30, uh, three days a week. Uh, and I took part one and part two. And got a real appreciation for... Uh, because most of the artists at that time were rebels also. They were considered to be uh, uh, really uh, 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 so totally different from their predecessors. Uh, but you appreciated that. But I pre the only thing I don't think I ever got into fully was uh, modern jazz, uh, where it's just these discordant notes. And I guess I could someday. But um, uh, I've just yeah, seen my, it my expand. Father -in -law, my, my father-in-law had a great line about jazz. He says, he's not into any kind of music he can't whistle to. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to whistle jazz. Well, John, John is, is a, a huge uh, uh, appreciate appreciator of music. Quite frankly, we never discussed it, John. But I know that every time that we used to go out and shoot uh, uh, somebody, particularly if it were at a, a convention or something, and there would be a band either in a restaurant nearby or in the lobby or something like that, John would say, "You know what?" I got a half hour. He didn't say it this way. He just I just want to stop here for a minute and maybe we can tape them. And we wound up spending 45 yeah, minutes oh, at the end of a long day. I You're, think I love music because I'm a frustrated musician. I, I was a drummer. And there's a great uh, debate among musicians whether drummers are musicians or not. <laughs> I don't think I was ever a musician, but I was a drummer. But I it music is a unique it's unique to the human experience. You know, we yeah. we say that the birds, you know, are making music, and we call what the the noise the, the whales use to communicate whale song. Right. But the fact of the matter is, only people make real music. Only people can compose music. The rest of those animals are communicating, right. and it's beautiful, uh, but it's not music. We make music and think about the, the styles of music from Beethoven to uh, rock and roll, even rap, if you want to call it music, um, R&B, certainly, and, um, uh, um, you know, modern jazz. Uh, it, you know, it's all unique and it's all so human. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't understand people who, who don't, like, appreciate music or enjoy music. Uh, probably few and far between. Um, I, I don't want to say I'm a frustrated musician, but I am one of those guys who regrets quitting piano when I was a kid. My mom and dad say, you're going to regret this one day. And, <laughs> and, as a DJ. And, and, and I regret it. My dad could play by ear. Just, I mean, every song started the same way and it ended the same way. Every song, whether it was a hymn or a football fight song, or whatever it was on the piano, it started and ended the same way. Kind but of fun. Your, your but, years of radio, didn't you, weren't you in fact uh, distributing music uh, uh, many times just, of your distributing, own choice? Distributing it and producing it are two different things. So I would love to be able to sit down at the piano and I would love to be able to I, th I think I've dreamed hit songs and I wake up and I can't remember it. I have no idea of how to notate how, you know, how, how to write that song, but it's fascinating to me. And one of my, you know, pipe dream wishes would to be, be in a recording studio when a major hit is recorded. Mm. I just would love to be there when it uh, happens. So would every, every musician on the planet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, if you know, you if you're frustrated, I mean, you know, there's a couple of great, uh, the best one I've seen uh, documentaries called The Wrecking Crew. And that's oh, yeah. either on Netflix or Amazon. I mean, that is an amazing uh, yeah. documentary about some stellar, legendary musicians. Absolutely. I, I know them well, yeah. Glenn Campbell was a member of The Wrecking Crew. Yep. Yeah. Member yeah. Of the also, there, there's been some documentaries on uh, Queen 
of just random stuff that was shot while they were doing stuff and how they how they actually created some of their various musics uh, sure. uh, musical pieces as well as the Beatles there's enough footage of uh, studio work with them so uh, uh, you're right and also uh, uh, Dan Rather I think on uh, one of the obscure um, uh, cable channels tends to uh, uh, interview uh, musicians of the 20th century uh, about their backstories and how they created all this stuff. I, wow. As I said, my 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 expanding uh, enjoyment of music is more in the artists who create it and watching right. them perform and how they put it all together. So I guess that's that's part of it. So you right. know, uh, one last thought, and that is that um, I think our generation is probably more open to different kinds of music than later generations, than our kids, let's say. Mm. Um, I can remember dancing at high school dances to what was called the Great American Songbook, the, right. the, the songs of the 30s, even the 20s. Right. Um, but certainly the 30s and 40s. And here it was in the 50s, late 50s and right. 60s that were dancing to that music. At the same time, we would dance to rock and roll. Mm. And uh, and then, of course, while I was still in school, the folk, what do you call it, folk music phenomenon. Yeah, Peter, uh, Paul and Mary, in. the Kingston yeah. Trio. Right. Like and, and yeah, and a lot of this music existed simultaneously. You know, you could go to a Joan Baez concert and to a Beatles concert within the same year, if you wanted. Sure. So I, I think our generation just has, by maybe by chance, just grown up with a wide variety of music. We have an if appreciation go, of more if, music. If, try, try this out. Go to Google and type in like 1975, 1976 billboard charts. Yes. Yeah. And you will find on a top 30 playlist of a radio station, you will find country crossovers some kind of psychedelic something, yeah. folk music, a novelty song, yeah. a theme to a TV show. It is, it is mind-boggling the variety of music that was popular at that time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I, country music was big in my life, too. So, yeah. Um, yes. it, it, big for me, too. Yeah. Maybe it's just our generation. I hope not. I hope our kids and our grandchildren learn to appreciate all these forms. Well, I, I kind of force fed it. My daughter, I mean, I, I kiddingly would, you know, if we were riding down the road and, and the Beatles song came on the radio, I did not allow talking in the car. Nobody talked. The Beatles were <laughs> so, so when I go over to their house and she's got the Beatles on there, you know, Alexa playing the Beatles or something or Jimmy Buffett, it's like, oh, man. You're killing me. You love this stuff. This dad, I grew up with this stuff. I love this music. And at the and same you know time, she'll you know she'll what? text Appa, me. Appa is back. Appa yeah, she'll just she'll, she'll text me album. something. She'll text me something new that it's like, man, this is a great song. So we share music and yeah, I, I don't think it's a matter of again, as we said from the from the get go. It's not as we get older, hopefully that our music tastes change. I hope they just expand because there is a wealth of music out there. And what boggles my mind, truly, since the beginning when the caveman, whoever cobbled together and, you know, chiseled out the first song on the wall of the cave, that there have not, how is like that they can still come up with different melodies? You would yeah. think that mathematically every possible song that can be written has been written and there is absolutely proof daily that that is not true. Yeah. Hey, John, yeah. by the way, John, uh, something that you can take away from this, I think that should really warm your heart, is that I think Bill discovered who the first musician was. That was a caveman <laughs> banging out. That's a percussion. That's so, right. A, a, so the first musician who knows? was probably a drummer. Hey, probably. I've got to be. My partner, Ringo Coleman. <laughs> well, thank you, Bill. Well, guys, I'd like to... I'd like to be able to sing us out of this. Well, go, why don't but, you sing us a little ditty? But all I have is words like, thanks, Bill. Thanks, thanks John. Thanks for the thanks, memories. Thanks, Art. How about John? That's a, thanks for the memories. Oh, very good. Nice. Oh. Nice. Appreciate you having me back, guys. Always a pleasure.
All right, see you soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.